Welcome to another coding tool review. And today we're looking at N depend. That is the letter N and then the word depend. You can get there by going to ndepend.com. Now this coding tool is more like an analysis tool for your code base. I actually ran into it a few years ago. It was recommended to me and I used this tool to analyze several projects that I was working on. Of course, some had better coding standards than others. And this tool really helped me to bring the ones that were lacking up to scratch. Now this tool, it installs directly into Visual Studio and it supports several versions of Visual Studio. And if you just look through the website, it may look complicated and all, but really and truly all they're saying is that they help you to analyze your .NET projects and they support all .NET versions. It works with all .NET IDEs and CICD technologies and it runs on all operating systems. So that's great. So it offers in-depth code quality management and reviews. So yes, you can always pay somebody for a code review, but you can also just get this tool and let it analyze your code for you and spit out some very intuitive reports on where your code base is at and what can be improved. And if you just look through, you'll see that it has several testimonials. It's being used by some big companies and it has testimonials by giants in the industry from reputable organizations. So I do, well, I mean, they endorse it and I endorse it as well. So after you get to the website, you can actually sign up for a 14 day trial and you can always go to the pricing and see what the pricing pattern is. I'm not necessarily going to focus on that. So I suggest you go ahead and download that 14 day trial and you can install it to your IDE. If you want more pointed directions, you can always go to the docs and look at the getting started on whichever operating system you're on guide. So basically after you download the archive, you'll see here that it has support for Visual Studio from 2022 all the way back down to 2010. Even though I'm sure nobody is probably using these anymore, but the fact is it has extensive support. You need only download the extension, unzip it to your machine and not in any one of those system folders um, where you might run into problems. And then you'll see the installer right there and you choose the Visual Studio that you wish to install it to. So for this demo, I'm going to run the analysis tool against two different projects and they're both the same system but version one of the system was an all-in-one project that in all honesty did not follow um, a lot of the solid principles and it's actually a .NET 5 project so the versions of course if it supports all versions of .NET what whatever version of .NET you are using it can do that analysis so this one is a .NET 5 um, if you've been keeping up to date with .NET you know that it's currently out of support, but of course we all have legacy systems. So this all-in-one project had a lot of tight coupling and um, it could have been done much better, of course, but I'm going to do the analysis here so that Independ can show what could have been done better. And then we're going to do the analysis on a more updated version that should have solved a lot of the problems that we will see highlighted here. So to do the analysis, what we're going to do is go to extensions, go to independent, and then say attach new independent project to current VS solution. Then it's going to show you that it found some assemblies. Now, if you, for whatever reason, don't get this, because I will be honest, the first time I tried this, um, it could not find the assembly. For some reason it was reporting that it couldn't find the assembly i actually just ran the project which i guess just compiled all the dll's and everything that were necessary and then when i tried to do this again it had the green um the green indicators here for the different assemblies so just letting you know if for whatever reason you don't see that you can just run the project make sure it builds um, and runs successfully and then you should be able to continue so let's analyze the two .NET assemblies and this might take a little time and the result is a page so it spits out an independent report and this gives us a dependency graph it gives us a matrix a tree map metric view so you have several views uh, visualizations 
it gives us a little indication of the technical debt that is here. And we see here that it's a rating of A and there was no code covered specified, so it couldn't fully um, assess the technical debt. And how many lines have been commented, how many issues at different ranks, um, rules that were violated or followed, and quality gates if they passed or not. All right, so let's look at the issues. So they're here showing me the actual file and telling me that there is some debt, whatever issues or six unresolved issues that may take up to an hour and change to fix. And you see that if you scroll through, you'll see all of those little assessments there. So that's good. That gives you a nice way that if you need to scope the work for your team, you can give a, a little estimate as to how long the time might take. If I click on the file, then it's actually showing me the code and showing me what I can do a little better and how much time each one might take to fix. Now, of course, based on your strictness and your requirements, you may not necessarily prioritize every single suggestion. Um, so you see here, this one is saying return URL because of its name, they're saying it should be a system.uri. This is default code from .NET Core and it's a string. So I wouldn't necessarily prioritize that as an issue, all right? Um, here, something is saying external property should be read only because it's typed as I list. All right, that probably could work, but maybe not because guess what? This is actually set inside of a method. If we make it read only, then we'd have to set it inside of the constructor. and This would not be possible. So, you know, just looking at everything, you have to make sure that you're assessing and seeing if what the suggestions are, are actually necessary and some naming suggestions and i'm sure that renaming this would probably take 12 minutes because you'd probably have to find the use in all files and everywhere of course with proper refactoring tools that might not necessarily take that much time so that's pretty cool you know um of course you go through you look at the issues and you can assess if they are absolutely necessary they're showing some stuff with the projects. So in the project for leave management, okay, that's the same issues. Um, they're showing some of the rules that would have been violated, some of the quality gates, and we have two failed quality gates. So critical rules being violated and debt rating per namespace. All right, so if we look at this one, we're going to see here that it is complaining that the naming used for that namespace is not quite what they would like, all right? So they're saying avoid prefixing type name with parent namespace name. All right, uh, I hear you. <laughs> and then you see other quality gates are being passed. So I guess the code is not as bad as I thought it would be, right? Um, one of the visualizations that I do love though is the diagram, the dependency graph. So this dependency graph will kind of show you all of the projects that you have and how they relate and what depends on what. And it can also show you um, if you have self dependencies, projects depending on themselves or stuff being tightly coupled. And it is very, very useful for seeing the different binaries and the different, well, the different packages, the different namespaces, and how your projects re, um, depend on each other. And they use basically namespaces and different assemblies to assess that. Now, of course, this is an all-in-one project. So this dependency chart is really just showing the web project and how it relates to maybe the views and other third-party libraries that it obviously has to use. So that's for the project that I dubbed worse, right? So let's look at this, the same exercise for the better structured project. So this leave management project, and it's the same system, but it was rebuilt using clean architecture. And you can learn about clean architecture in my clean architecture course. But let us run the same analysis for this new solution where I now have an API, a core infrastructure and UI section. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, attach a new report. And you see it's finding all of the different assemblies that it needs to assess. So let's just go ahead and assess all. 
All right, and then when that assessment is done, I, you'll see that there are more lines of code. And I'm just comparing it to the previous report here. Um, it's 2606. Okay, not by much, not too many more lines of code. And you'll see here that I'm okay with several rules and I violated more rules than in the one that I dubbed worse. And there are some high um, issues that need to be taken care of. So of course, if I jump over to issues, then they're going to be showing me what issues are. So let's just look at one of them quickly. And this is a similar issue with naming. So first name, last name, with the getter and the setter. Um, those are issues that it has detected. Once again, at your discretion, you may or may not prioritize some of them. Um, let us take a look at that dependency graph. So that dependency graph is showing a much bigger um, chart, obviously, because this is a much bigger project. But with this one, you'll actually see some red lines in between some of the references here. And I didn't say this earlier, but by just scrolling in and out, you can zoom in. So I'm going to zoom in here and then they're showing me this red line to indicate that there's some dependency here that it does not approve of some reference between the features request and the details. Now, what I suspect is really happening here is that maybe the files here have a different namespace and they actually should be, they relate to each other, but maybe these have a different namespace. So as far as independent is concerned, there's something wrong with that link. I can double check that of course, and see what exactly it's complaining about. But this chart to me gives a nice overview of all of the assemblies. And then if you zoom out, you'll stop seeing just the application. You see, this is the application. That's the persistence layer. And then you have each project being referenced right there so if i go down to the blazer ui then you'll see here that it references these services the authentication service and then there's the client now this client section is actually auto-generated so i believe the namespaces that were auto-generated probably don't follow some naming convention there so it gives a nice overview of what might be happening third party assemblies that are being referenced etc so i've shown you most of the other things already and um, you know i'm just going to encourage you go ahead and try it out i found it once again to be a useful tool on some of my professional projects and especially when working with my team so at least when we assess the work that is done we can actually use it to inform um, you know any retroactive work any debt that we're racking up technical debt that we're racking up and actually scope some time towards fixing those things while still moving forward with newer tasks so once again check out independ at independ.com and they do have a getting started guide which you can follow through and you know start your assessment and you can look at all of the diagrams get better explanations maybe better than what i've given you so far as to what each one does look at some use cases and rules and just get some insight into how you can improve your overall code quality as you develop so thank you for staying with me and going through this tool and remember to like share subscribe and stay tuned for more tutorials and product reviews see you soon